I'm Matthew Quinn with Quinn's Auction Galleries. This is the Waverly Rare Books division of Quinn's Auction Galleries. The auction uh, will take place Thursday night on March 5th. Uh, we'll start at 6 o'clock. We have about 490 items. And this auction will feature the collection of Stony Cooks, which is uh, a Martin Luther King and Civil Rights era collection of items. Stony was a volunteer who went to Selma in um, March of 1965 with the intent of staying seven days and ended up staying seven years. He has been a lifelong collector and really a born archivist of MLK related material and civil rights material. It was early 2014. Shirley and I were having breakfast, I think it was, with Harry Belafonte and his wife Pam. And he suggested to Shirley that he was going to give her one of the three documents. And um, you know, obviously we were appreciative, but we didn't know what we'd do with it or what it would be. When Shirley received it, obviously we were aware of the fact that this was a timely piece approaching the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Bill in 2014. So I mean, it was events and timing were coming together, so it just seems like to me it made sense to see whether or not there was a, a market um, for this. And it also fit in with the other documents that we had collected over the years. So this is the collection of Stony Cooks. The highlight of the collection is this letter here, which is the letter that Lyndon Johnson sent to Coretta Scott King the day after Martin Luther King was shot. In the letter, you'll see it really speaks to the personal relationship between Dr. King and Lyndon Johnson, and one that many believe was misrepresented in the movie Selma most recently. You can tell it's not just a condolence letter that you would think about. There's personality, there's compassion, there's care, there's deep sadness that comes through in this letter. So over the course of time, this letter was sent to Coretta at her home address. Uh, the volume of the condolence letters that went to them at that address was obviously more than she could handle. So she took them all to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, where you see that April 12, uh, 1968 stamp uh, when it was brought into SCLC. Presumably, it was given back to Coretta. She then gave it to Harry Belafonte in 2003. Harry was a personal friend. He was the executor of King's estate. He was an advocate of the movement and really a part of this whole story of the civil rights story over the last 50 years. The collection includes the registration book. It's the public registration book from the Spelman College funeral, from the Sisters Chapel funeral, where the public could come through. Now, the primary funeral was at uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, which we also have a program included in the lot. That was much smaller and there weren't as many people. The general masses went to Sisters Chapel. You'll see in the book, a number of people wrote messages and notes. They're from all over the world. They're from uh, Tennessee, from London, from Chicago. The list goes on and on of all the people that attended and came by to pay their respects during those days. It was two and a half days that this book sat here. And you'll see personal inscriptions, et cetera, from folks. Over here is a lot of items that uh, are SCLC related. Um, they go through the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, uh, which was King's nonprofit that he founded, and Stoney eventually rose to the executive director level at uh, SCLC. This includes three of his ID cards. It also includes a Poor People's Campaign ID card for Thomas Offenberger. Uh, and in this collection, there are a number of things, including some rather mundane uh, manila envelopes that happen to have uh, Dr. King's handwriting on them. The collection includes a number of speeches and early version drafts, including these two that are being sold with some others that have hand annotations from Dr. King. Uh, we see here uh, on this green sheet where he's asking for a Watts line, which is a, a wide area telephone service line to be installed in, in Los Angeles at a hotel he was staying at. And we see another speech here that has adjustments and changes to it, both from Offenberger and from Dr. King. And this is being sold with a few other items. This is another interesting piece in the sale uh, from a different consigner, actually consigned by the artist who was a local Washingtonian by the name of Edward Garfinkel. And we actually have a photo of the object here, uh, which is this, this sort of found metal sculpture that Mr. Garfinkel made. And there's a photo of Coretta lighting the candle at the march uh, on October 15, 1969. These are oftentimes referred to as found metal sculptures, so they're, they're objects of metal that uh, a person would have picked up. Uh, so it's just what we would call a found metal sculpture, uh, where he obviously uh, welded in the peace sign. Um, and it's a, just miscellaneous bits of trash 
that he assembled to create a piece that, that ultimately would go down in history being used for a civil rights march. With this unbelievable array of SCLC rate related material where you have early copies of speeches, handwritten documents, and just part of the movement, um, it gives bidders the chance to own a piece of something, a piece of the movement. And I think that'll resonate well with buyers. Bidders can log into Live Auctioneers, where all of the lots of the sale, including the ones uh, of Stony Cooks, will be available for live bidding.